Hello guys, good evening. My name is Sneha and I'll continue with my Forex weekly analysis for this week. Uh, so if you remember, if you have been following my weekly analysis last week, what we discussed about dollar, it exactly went the same way. So dollar closed like a bearish candlestick and you're expecting it to fall down further, but at the support, at this support price, till this price, and it exactly went that way. So if you check the daily chart, you can see the daily movement of dollar last week. So these three candles back to back, uh, which is Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, they fell till here and it took a support of weekly, which is a 200 moving average is acting as a very strong support. And if I draw the trend line also, this is the support level. Okay. And if you see the daily market, uh, as I discussed last week, also there's a possibility market might fall till here. And as it's a 200 moving average, so it should be respecting that. And it can bounce up from there. And that's what happened exactly on Thursday and Friday. Thursday, we got a proper confirmation. Thursday close gave, gave us a confirmation that market is rejecting this price and Friday continued to go up. So that's what happened in the dollar. Now this week, I'm expecting a dollar to continue the bullish momentum, at least till the price of this breakout level. Okay, which is exactly coinciding with the daily time frame. Also, if you see with again the 200 moving average of daily time frame. So somewhere around till this area, I'm expecting the market to go up till here and uh, which will be the break weekly breakout price. I think so. Yeah, see, which is coinciding with the moving average. So after some pullback, I'm expecting dollar to go up till here. And then uh, here we'll take a call as per the candle closing, which happens like this uh, coming week after Friday. So I'm expecting some pullback to happen. Wait for as it's Monday, wait for proper pullbacks in smaller time frame. And mostly once it, it has done the 50% or 61.8% pullback, then you can expect market to go up from here and test this level. So that's what uh, is my expectation with dollar this week. So I am clearly bullish for dollar, but not at the current price. I'll wait for a better price to enter in the market. So after dollar, let's just discuss the gold chart, which is XAU USD. So gold has closed like a bullish candlestick, but again, it's playing in the range. If you remember the range which we spoke about, this is the range of support level. Okay, clear support level it is. Here, and this is the clear resistance level. Though the candle has closed bullish, but still it hasn't broken this resistance, which is being respected from last, I don't know, almost uh, seven, eight weeks and even more than that. So if you check the daily time frame also, you can clearly see that range. So what I would suggest for the gold is buy at the support, sell at the resistance. The same thing which I suggested last week. So you should continue to do that. Once the breakout happens, then we can see which side of the trend it continues. So that's about gold chart. Now moving to oil. So US oil, if you see, I can see a proper dark cloud cover pattern, which is forming. And also if I zoom out the chart, this is a very strong breakout pullback level. So this area, which was initially a support, did a breakout, it did a pullback. And also if I draw the Fibonacci level, Fibonacci retracement level from high to low, see it's clearly rejecting 61.8 with a candlestick confirmation. So this itself shows that I'm bearish for, uh, for oil. And after some pullback, I would, looking, I would look to sell oil this week. If it breaks this, if it fails to fall from here and if it goes up further, then my next level of support will be somewhere around this. If, if this level fails, okay? So that would be my next level of support to uh, take buy setups. I mean, sorry, sell setups. Right. So at the current area also, as it's a 61.8% FIBO level, so I'm expecting the oil to fall further from this level. So I'm clearly bearish for oil. So if I'm bearish for oil, so automatically I am bearish for Canadian dollar also because it has a very uh, direct correlation. Okay. And as discussed already, we are bullish for dollar, bearish for Canadian dollar, basically bearish for oil. So USD CAD, one strong, one weak pair makes it a very good pair to trade this week. So dollar buy, Canadian dollar sell. So USD CAD overall looks like a very good buy setup. And you can clearly notice it technically also. So it is a resistance breakout pullback. And you also have a bullish candlestick confirmation here. And it's more like a, you can say piercing pattern, right? 
and after some pullback you should be looking to buy at least till this level this level is a support level which it did a breakout so i'm expecting once market starts picking up it should test this level so i am clearly bullish for usd cad now starting with the euro usd other major pairs so euro usd see this 200 moving average tells it all there's no need to draw a trend line if you want you can draw this and you can clearly see it is at a very strong resistance and the move has also become what i mean has been vertical so you can expect the fall also with the same momentum after some pullback so i'm clearly bearish for euro usd as we have already checked that dollar looks strong euro usd as a currency looks weak okay so but euro in itself is very weak or not that we'll check with other pairs and the correlation of that so let's first check all the major pairs now checking gbp usd so gbp usd also is clearly indicating for sell right if you draw this trend line you can clearly see it was a support turned into resistance again became a support again became a resistance so i would purely look to sell uh gbp usd but if you see the candlestick wise it's more like a spinning top pattern or there's big on both the sides reason being if you see with dollar also market first went down right because we were expecting the market to test this level first and then bounce up from there so first 3 days market uh, dollar was weak and then the last 2 days it became strong because it reached the support area that's why we have uh, most of the places candlestick is not towards one side it's not a complete body dominating candle it has wicks it's more like a spinning top type formations because market uh, was half uh, half half both the sides like first three days it was weak the next remaining two days it became strong and it picked up the momentum okay but you uh, this you should or more focus on the where it is formed like for example gp usd this area looks very strong for, as a resistance so it's a very strong sell right so in between euro and gp as an individual currency which is more weaker that would be a better pair to trade i mean currency to trade against dollar so it should always be one weak one strong like i always say so let's check between euro and gp which looks more weaker so euro gp if i see has closed like a bullish candle and also it has it was a minor swing which did a breakout and did a sub pullback and we have a bullish candlestick so mainly euro gp is looking like a buy to me okay and if euro gp is a buy which means gp is more weaker clearly so if i have to trade a usd pair against some currency i would prefer gbp more than euro right and now let's check aud and new zealand so aud usd it's here so aud usd also if you see the candlestick is more like a spinning top but where it's forming it's clearly showing a sell confirmation so if you see it's formed at the resistance and the nature of this candlestick why it is formed like this i've already explained because dollar was weak first 3 days and then it picked up the momentum and became strong so that's why first the market has gone up spiked on the upside and in aud usd and in other pairs as well and then it has closed below right so aud usd looks like a good sell even new zealand usd if you if i zoom out the chart it is at a very strong resistance right and it is clearly rejecting the resistance so indicating for sell again so now in between aud and new zealand which is more weaker to trade against dollar so you can check aud and cd as a pair so aud ncd is clearly indicating for a sell don't see the forming candle see the candle which is already closed so we had a pin bar at the resistance a week before and after that market has continued to fall down and i'm expecting that momentum to continue at least till this level right so also if you see it's at the resistance which clearly means as aud ncd is looking to come down which means aud is clearly more weaker than new zealand right so till now if we see the more weaker pairs are aud and uh, currencies aud and gbp now in between gbp and aud which is more weaker so you would get to know which is the weakest currency so you can see though the candle has closed like an inside bar which is more like a indecisive candle but it is playing below 200 moving average okay also if i zoom out and i can see that market 
might have done the breakout here with a bearish body dominating candle and it's a pullback so let's also check on a daily time frame the momentum so daily is clearly indicating for sell if you see the moving average as well as the setup of breakout pullback right so gvp is clearly looking the weakest of all uh, if you compare against uh, euro against new zealand against aud in fact so that's what uh, till now what i can figure out if i have to summarize is like gvp looks the weakest then comes aud then comes new zealand and euro so in between euro and new zealand which is more weaker you can check with euro and cd as a chart so again it's playing below the uh, 200 moving average euro and cd so which clearly means euro looks more weaker so i will just correct the trend line right or instead of drawing this trend line i think this one is better so but this is a daily chart we have to check the weekly chart things can change if the time frames change so things also change that way so if you notice this it became even more stronger so basically euro ncd is clearly looking like a sell which means euro is weaker than new zealand right so euro we would be on the sell side right so till now hierarchy which is clear is it's gvp then it's aud then it's euro okay and then it's new zealand so new zealand is not looking that weak in comparison to all the weak currencies okay now talking about chf so in between euro and chf again if i have to check so now i'm trying to figure out these are all on the sell side like chf is also more on the sell side if you check usd chf as a chart you can clearly figure it out that it's indicating for a sell right but we have to see which is more weaker than the currency comparatively right and chf also if you notice it's uh to usd chf as a pair like why i'm saying chf is looking weaker because it has taken a support and it has bounced up from here so usd chf is looking more towards the upside because it has taken a support and if i extend it it becomes even more stronger so it has taken a support at a strong level and it's bouncing up from there so that way usd strong chf weak but there's so many weak pairs so you have to check the priority like gvp is looking the weakest still now then aud then euro and then new zealand so where chf fits you have to check using uh, let's say first thing should be euro chf whether it's weaker than euro or not so against euro chf if you see again there's a breakout pullback setup so you can clearly see most of the setups are based on breakout pullback that's why i like this strategy so much so and you can clearly see we have a candlestick confirmation which is more like a bearish harmi and uh, if you see which this euro chf sell itself says that euro is more weaker so now uh, we have to check against new zealand because new zealand is the last pair which is looking uh, less weak than all other currencies so let's check uh, new zealand and chf how what's the status of the currency so new zealand chf is indicating again for a sell right which means chf is looking strong against uh, all the weak currencies if you check against gbp against uh, euro against aud against new zealand so chf is looking more on the stronger side okay but not as strong as dollar and again let's check usd jpy so we get to know the status of jpy if it's strong or weak canadian dollar also we are on the weak side so we have to check uh, if it's weaker than uh, all other currencies or what's the priority so first before moving to jpy let's check the canadian dollar because with oil we have already a confirmation that Can canadian dollar should be on the weak side but in what priority it comes then that we would have to check so let's start from the lowest new zealand cat okay so new zealand cat you can clearly figure it out that it is at the resistance right which means that it depends on the candle close but it's at the resistance which means new zealand is more weaker it's indicating for sell so that way canadian dollar can be uh, used as an indecisive pair in the sense it can be uh, used like a 
strong currency against weak pairs like for example gbp cad right it should be indicating for sell see it's at a, it is at the 200 uh, resistance let's say for example aud cad aud is weak and see it is at the 200 moving average and cad against aud is comparatively stronger same like chf what we are using right so aud chf also is indicating for sell because chf is looking stronger right in between cad and chf i think chf should be looking strong see it's looking like a sell and it's a very strong sell so this is the breakout pullback so cad is weak but not as much weak as euro and aud and gbp and new zealand still on the weaker side but chf looks strong if you notice against all the pairs chf is looking bullish as a currency right now checking uh, jpy coming back to the usd jpy pair now this is something very uh, i mean you can say very weird in the sense that jp usd jpy has a very bear, bearish closing bearish body dominating candle has closed despite of the fact that dollar picked up the momentum and most of the cases dollar is looking like a buy but only against usd jpy it's looking like a sell reason being jpy is even more stronger than dollar that's why usd jpy is indicating for sell so jpy looks strongest uh, in fact more stronger than usd so if you check uh, the jpy pairs everywhere it should be indicating jpy pair should be indicating for sell because jpy everywhere is a second currency so if jpy goes up as a pair euro jpy will come down because it's a second currency right see indicating for sell at the resistance breakout pullback more 200 moving average coinciding right but don't sell at the current price wait for proper pullbacks in smaller time frames look for aggressive entries and then you should enter for a sell same goes for gp jpy look at the place where it is just now right support breakout pullback if you check aud jpy again the same thing where it has formed makes a huge difference right support turned into resistance if you check uh, let's say cat jpy again indicating for sell if you check chf jpy so chf everywhere is looking strong right if you would have noticed but only against uh, jpy it's looking weak right because jpy is very strong so this uh, week things are pretty clear now so on the strong side we have three currencies one is jpy which is the strongest then we have dollar and then we have uh, chf okay so and then on the sell side we have five uh, currencies the weakest being gbp then we have aud then we have new zealand uh, sorry then we have euro because in between euro and new zealand it was indicating for a sell so then we have euro then we have new zealand and then we have canadian dollar so these are all on the weak side so that's a summarized version for the entire analysis i know that just by hearing it one one time or two times it would sound a little confusing but correlations works very well along with your long term analysis technical analysis so keep watching the video three four times uh, every week i post that video and we i talk about correlation like for example you should watch the previous week video first so then you can understand what i analyze and what actually happened especially for dollar index you can always connect the points because everything is based on dollar that's a base currency right so just keep trading and keep watching the videos if any queries please uh, post it on the comment box yeah, i forgot to add usd inr so i'll just analyze that quickly so usd in our weekly time frame like i said it has to break out the range it hasn't broken out still it's playing in between the symmetrical triangle and once it breaks out then the trend clarity will be there so it needs to break out on either of the side and then we would have a confirmation like the same thing was the last week also and uh, it's too late to trade in between the range because it has come very closer so the range uh, i mean risk to reward is not that great to trade in between the range because range has come very close that way okay 
Thank you, guys. I hope the analysis is helpful. And any queries, any comments, please post it on the comment box, and we'll try to help you out. And we'll try to add uh, all the things, whatever is needed, in the next weekly analysis video. Thank you, guys. Have a good trading week.